What's up, people? Today, I want to come to you with the Supreme Conversation. And before I get started, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. And I also want to give a shout out to Project of Government Oversight. I want to thank you for giving me a shout out on your platform and supporting our work as what we're doing as far as holding folks accountable for what they're doing and keeping them in line, understanding what it is that we have the restrictions placed upon them for. And their slogan is, to create a more effective and ethical and accountable government. Now, got that out the way. Today, I want to talk about the hospital shooting that happened in Chicago. It was reported that four were dead, including the suspect. And the main thing that was reported first was the fact that a woman was killed outside the hospital by the suspect after walking with him. And what was told was that she was shot in the chest and then when she hit the ground, there were three more shots at close range that was pretty much what was concluded to have killed her. Now, we also got reports of a police officer being killed and then we had two random hospital attendees that were killed. And these were just regular hospital going ill folks that were killed for no apparent reason, no point, no purpose. And the thing was, this was not categorized a mass shooting, but an issue of gun control did come up. And the thing that I want to point out and have this discussion about was the fact that when do you categorize it a mass shooting and when are we actually going to talk about the actual issues of the guns? Because when we're looking at people and what's happening with these mass shootings, it's becoming almost a daily occurrence. It's becoming one where police are killing citizens and very little conviction, very little suffrage from it. We have random people killing people. And it's only called a mass shooting when it's deemed right for headlines. We have people that are killing our children going to school. And then when they're caught, or in this case killed, we know more about their background of being in places of mentally ill and not getting help. We go into blaming the NRA and the lobbyists for allowing guns to be in our society. When in fact, when the Constitution in this nation was set up, it was set up as a restriction on government to not bar one from having the right to bear arms. Because the purpose for bearing arms is the protection of one's life one's family, one's property, in their pursuit of happiness. And when you're talking about the issues of placing more restrictions on the ability to get a gun, we're talking about placing restrictions on those that are doing it the right way. We're not talking about or addressing those that are being brought in that are diagnosed as being mentally ill. Diagnosed as having some type of break in their their mental abilities to even produce these things. And what we have to address and have a real conversation about is the fact that we have a right to protect ourselves. And the ability to continue doing that is laid upon those that 
don't want us protecting ourselves. And when you're talking about placing restrictions on those that are doing the right thing, I'm going to give you a quick story and then I'm going to end for today. When I was 15, I had an issue with a couple guys that was on my block that was doing things that I didn't feel was, was you know, one of those, well, basically, they would beat my ass. Let's, let's call it that. And I was like, yeah, we finna stop all this because yeah, it, it was never a fair fight. It was always two or three against me. And I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I didn't have to go through a 10 day waiting period to go get a gun. I went and got a gun in about 30 minutes with 60 bucks. And for some reason, nobody wanted to place a restriction on my ability to handle a, a fire. Nobody gave me a 10 day waiting period. Nobody even did a check on my back. I was 15 years old and I was able to walk outside and get a gun. Which brings me to the point of when you're placing or looking to place restrictions on someone getting a fire for whatever reason, the restrictions are not going to the people that they're supposed to go to. Because the criminals are always going to have access to fire. The mentally ill will more than likely have access to fire because nobody wants to talk about it. And then there's nothing in place to actually help them because we're always looking for excuses to not be held responsible for the things that are done. And we're always wanting to play the victim. And as we're playing the victim, we're forgetting about the lives that are lost, not only from that mentally ill person that's taking another person's life, but we're forgetting about their family. We're forgetting about their community. We're forgetting about those that love them. We're forgetting about their friends. We're forgetting about their co-workers. We're forgetting about the, the process or the thing that they actually bring to another's life. Those things are lost when those are not taken care of. So when we're talking about restrictions, let's talk about getting folks help that need it. Let's talk about putting things in place that not only helps the mentally ill, but those that are around them as well. Because if we can continue to blame the gun manufacturers, if we can continue to blame Smith & Wesson, we continue to blame Remington, we're forgetting that Smith & Wesson is putting out a product that is working. We're forgetting that Remington is putting out a product that is working. And it's again one of those where I say that we hold those that are in fast food restaurants at a higher standard than we do those that are put in place to protect us. Because we would not accept the fact that we would go to a place like McDonald's or Burger King and our meal isn't 100% correct. We'd have an issue with it. But we wouldn't talk to just the manager. We wouldn't talk to just some random customer. We'd actually go and have a conversation with the owner of the business. Remington and Smith & Wesson are putting out products that are working. They're giving us our meals 100% correct. So it's not the guns that are having the issue. It's the people that are using the guns that we're having the issue with. And the people that are using these guns are giving the excuse of having mental illness. So let's address the mental illness. Let's address the healthcare aspects of this. So now, again, this is just a conversation for the day. I'll see you guys on tomorrow, and happy Thanksgiving.